With the midterm this close, political debates are in full swing, and I recently was on the phone with my dad talking about politics. My dad likes to post things about how he doesn't like Trump's rhetoric, and you know, we've, we've got a lot, of, a lot of similar arguments, but for me, I'm constantly trying to make sure everything I'm doing is, is correct, and so, and, and also as like a journalistic principle, try and make sure I'm not injecting my bias into what's actually going on, and it's a very difficult thing to do, because just, you understand, like, I do have bias, right? I'm not... It's like people try to make fun of me because they claim that I'm the one claiming I'm objective, which I'm not. And then they post things which are like fake quotes for me. Anyway, in our conversation, I was talking about how a lot of the ideas the average person has are incorrect because the media is not covering the full story. You can see the story I've pulled up. The danger in media telling only half the story on political violence. And it's not even just half the story. It's like a quarter of the story because they leave out a ton. But I asked my dad, did you know that someone uh, did a drive-by of a Republican uh, GOP headquarters. And he said, no. And I said, why is that? Like someone literally, you know, did a drive-by firing into a GOP headquarters in Florida. So he said he didn't know. Honestly, I don't know either. I don't know, you'd think that would be bigger news on mainstream networks. I said, did you know that someone committed an act of arson against a Republican headquarters? And he said, no, he didn't hear that. I'm like, right. But you'll constantly hear about these bigger, high-profile stories. And so here's, here's, there's, there's a couple issues of bias, for one. And we'll go through this. Like the guy who, who uh, you know, fired, in, uh, fired at the, the synagogue, that, that whole tragedy, hated Trump. But they'll, they'll, they'll lump that in with right-wing extremism, even though moderate Republicans, conservatives people on the right have nothing to do with it and are actually at extreme odds with a racist anti-Semite. But it will get lumped. So, you know, you, you really have to look through all of the cases of violence determine whether or not there is a left, right, or just abstract. There was a guy in Portland who, you know, got into a fight, hit a knife, and they, say, they, they tried claiming he was right wing, even though he was kicked out of a right wing event. The point is, you know, the story of the guy mailing these packages around, it's high profile. I can understand why that will get a lot of coverage, but you'd think that with, you know, all of these lower level instances of violence, there would be more condemnation and more reporting. But in fact, we actually see the media often defend Antifa and defend these kinds of attacks or just don't report on them. So let's take a look at this article, because it's, it's rather interesting They make some points. When mass media displays such a clear bias, then the people who are on the losing end of that bias are not going to be happy. Hence, Trump gets elected. In the last few months, we've seen numerous acts of politically motivated or targeted violence. Some of these cases have been plastered all over the news for days or weeks. Some others have been met with deafening silence, and which is which, is which hasn't exactly been random. I think they, that's a typo. I don't know. And which is which. Oh, I see what he's saying. Okay. And which is which hasn't exactly been random. There is clear bias in the reporting of political violence, and I believe this has some serious consequences for people's ability to trust the media and, and bridge divided culture. To understand why, we need to look at what's actually happened recently. So while that follows, uh, so while what follows is far from a complete list of all the politically motivated violence, it encompasses many of the most recent high profile examples. What you've probably heard. The Trump supporting lunatic Caesar Sayak Jr. and the package he mailed out. Anti-Semite Robert Bowers and the synagogue. He was not right. Uh, I would not call him right wing. I mean, maybe you could. I don't know. I don't know how they conflate that. Uh, let's see. A man with a uh, history of mental illness entered a Kro uh, Kroger grocery store in Jefferson, Kentucky and killed a 67-year-old man named Marie Stahl with a handgun for no apparent reason. Envelopes testing positive for ricin uh, were, were sent to the Secretary of Defense, General Mattis. Self-described incel Alec Manassian this is actually not true. I don't, I don't believe this is actually a fact that he described himself as, as an incel, but he drove a, a van into a crowd that happened. And then you have uh, the James Field incident at, in, in Charlottesville. They mentioned the, uh, the, the Las Vegas incident as well with, with Stephen Paddock. They say, I'm including the Las Vegas incident in this list because it sparked another uh, national gun control debate, this time over whether or not it should be legal to own bump stocks. You've prob you, you'll probably also have heard about a number of cases of street violence involving the Proud Boys. And perhaps you might have recently learned that Facebook shut down that group's main page. And you'll have probably heard of various anti-Semitic threats and acts of vandalism against Jewish community centers, churches, and other political targets, which are often assumed to be a product of Trump's rhetoric. Most notably, a voting event was shut down because someone vandalized with anti-Semitic content. Turned out to be a Democratic volunteer. And I did this video just yesterday, okay? So you hear the story, and then very few people hear who actually perpetrated it. I want to give a quick shout out to BuzzFeed News, who did a complete and thorough story talking about all of this, showing who the perpetrator was. He was a Democratic volunteer. I think they, they could have done a better job, but a lot of outlets 
didn't report on the perpetrator. What you probably haven't heard, rice and envelopes sent not just to Mattis, but Ted Cruz and President Trump. And, and they say, like, like Sayak, none of them can say, uh, seem to contain actual ricin, but, you know, it was castor beans. A Democratic activist working for American Bridge assaulted Kristen, uh, yeah, okay, assaulted someone, uh, assaulted Kristen Davidson, a campaign manager for the GOP. I believe it's Republican, yes. In Minnesota, Republican State Representative Sarah Anderson was chased and punched by a man. Another Republican, Shane Mechelin, suffered a concussion after being punched. And these are things I've talked about. So you, you probably heard, heard by the if you watch my channel. Republican Party headquarters in Manhattan was vandalized. Jackson Costco, an intern working for, the, for Democratic uh, Senator Sheila Jackson Lee, was charged with doxing Republican senators. Serious harassment. A Florida man was arrested for making uh, threats to people who supported Brett Kavanaugh. Shots were fired at a Republican HQ. Jordan Hunt kicked that woman, which, you know, it's, it's like... I can go through this list, right? And I'm, and I'm, and I'm not going to read through too much of it because I feel like it's a bit re repetitive. But the point is plain and simple. When the Proud Boys got into a scuffle and the video made it appear like they, they were the ones starting the fight or took it too far, the story goes far and wide. But when the story, when the video is clear that Antifa was throwing explosives in Portland, per se, that story doesn't go far and wide. Some people report on it. Or what, ha what about when the progressive, the Bernie voter, got clubbed in the back of the head by Antifa? Doesn't go far and wide. And I have to wonder why. I've got this page that I keep often, uh, I, I keep open relatively often. It's from Breitbart. And I'm not a big fan of Breitbart. I think that they're overly sensational. But here they have this, uh, they call it a rap sheet. 632 acts of media approved violence and harassment against Trump supporters. And in the title, I can give you an example of exactly what my issue with Breitbart is. It's not media approved. Often it's ignored for sure. Sometimes it is, like when CNN plays defense for Antifa. And, but, but it's not, but, but they do say it's violent, uh, violence and harassment. So I think that's fair. And they've got some photos, but they have this huge list of all of these different incidents going back years. And most people have probably never heard these stories. And I wonder what would happen if I sent this to someone I knew who doesn't really pay attention to the news, but who hates Trump or, you know, thinks Republicans are, are fascists or something when they probably realize that. You know, the point I often make about political violence is that when it comes to low-level uh, acts of violence and incivility, the left wins by leaps and bounds. Because most Republicans are kind of like sitting in their lawn chairs waving miniature American flags, and the left is out with masks, smashing things, and starting fires. That's not the mainstream left. That is a fringe group. But you, then you have stories of, like, some dudes wearing a Trump hat sitting in a, in a, in a Chick-fil-A, and a guy walks up and throws a drink at him. You have a story about this, uh, recently, this woman shows up to some, you know, uh, Republican campaigners at a university and throws chocolate milk on some guy and then, like, kicks one of their signs. There's video after video of low-level incidents like this, violence and harassment. Are people being killed? Mostly no, right? We do have extremists who are on the fringe, ultra-nationalist side and, you know, anti-Semite side who do commit acts of violence, you know? Oh, it was a Trump supporter who mailed out those, those, those fake, those, those suspicious packages to a bunch of Democrats. It is more extreme, though extremely rare, right? When it comes to the left, by leaps and bounds, it's regular run-of-the-mill people who are getting attacked, you know? I mean, so, some of these, you can point out, they say it's 632. They have Eric Holder telling Democratic activists when they go low, we kick them, things like that. But look at this, there's like numerous stories uh, you know, throughout the month. I want to point out another reason why, you know, I'm not a big fan of Breitbart. They, they bring up like, I don't know what word this was, like Rosie O'Donnell saying the military should remove Trump is not violence or harassment. It's just dumb rhetoric. But they do have some things like anti-Trump protester threatens to, I don't know, assault a, a, a conservative reporter. I want, oh, right. Yes, this one went viral. And I want to avoid saying certain words because YouTube will ban me. That's what they've been doing. Yeah. Anyway, Back to the main story, and uh, I want to bring up the, the like kind of his closing point. He says, uh, uh, he talks about Matt Christensen uh, pointing out that although most news media routinely and uncritically report the claim that nearly all examples of modern political violence are instigated by groups like the Proud Boys and alt the alt-right and neo-Nazis and white supremacists, there have been numerous examples of anti violence which have not had anything whatsoever to do with protesting fascists or any kind of right-wing activity at all. For example, the recent takeover of multiple streets in downtown Portland, Oregon, or any of uh, numerous examples of Antifa members, Antifa members attacking journalists. What's more, 
Over the past four to five years, there have been dozens of examples of left-wing protesters using violence to shut down mainstream conservative speakers like Charles Murray, Ayan Hirsi Ali, Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin, Milo Yiannopoulos, and others. Yet no organized conservative group attempted to prevent Mark Bray from speaking, because they wouldn't. The point is, it's another example, and this is a decent breakdown, of how, you know, if it's not sensational, the media doesn't care. In D.C., when you have hundreds of black-clad individuals smashing things, starting fires, where is the condemnation? Where is the weeks-long campaign talking about this violence? So, you know, I, I get these people, it's, it's really fascinating. They're like, Tim, you don't talk about white wing violence. I do. Absolutely do. It's just extremely rare. I made a video about the Rise Above people just a couple days ago who got in indicted by the, by the feds. I made multiple videos about Charlottesville. I've made m more since then talking about what happened and talk about the escalation of identity politics and street violence. The problem is, if you're not only ever talking about them, it's, it's not fair. So here, here we go. Take a look at this list of 632 stories, of which I've covered a decent amount of them. And because there's so many, and I've covered them, they say I'm not being fair. Well, I'll tell you what. When there are 632 archived stories of extreme rhetoric, harassment, or violence, and I, I try to cover this ground-level politics, but there's only a small handful of the extremist incidents, then yes, it may look like I'm, I'm being unfair. But you know what? It's just, you know, I, I tell people, listen, I don't cover the fringe extremes. I don't cover Antifa necessarily. I don't cover the far right, you know, ultra-nationalists, rise above, identitarians, whatever you want to call them. What I cover is run-of-the-mill, ground-level politics. With the midterm coming up, I've been doing a lot of talk about Republicans and Democrats. The reason Antifa ends up on my radar so, radar so often is because they show up to regular Trump supporter events and start hitting people. The woman who was splashing chocolate milk on those guys, and that this is like a viral video now, was calling them Nazis. They're just Republicans, right? And that's why they end up getting the coverage. So there you go. There's absolutely an imbalance. I think part of it has to do with some of these stories aren't big enough to warrant national coverage. And that's just a damn shame. But you know what it is what it is. So uh, I say that a lot. Anyway, stick around. I've got a couple more videos coming up in just a few minutes. The next video, uh, we're going to talk about the left and incivility again. And we're going to talk about comedy. And we're going to talk about SNL mocking this Republican candidate who has an eye patch. And I am not okay with it. And then people criticize me saying I'm just playing up some conservative victimhood narrative. No, no. Stick around. The video coming up in a few minutes.